Chapter 1. The Bogleheads Universe. A Brief Introduction to Investing. Let's meet the Bogleheads, a group of like-minded folks connected by a shared vision of financial responsibility. Named after investor expert John Bogle, Bogleheads Forum is a platform where its community members interact, and it is, by right, a phenomenon of contemporary economic advisory. Bogleheads believe their mission is to help investors convey the idea of the simple complexity of money and advocate for rational thinking and a caring attitude. But first things first, let's look at Bogleheads' value system. The planet of Bogleheads comprises millions of investors worldwide. It owes its philosophy to John Bogle, its unchanged leader and individual investor advocate who dedicated his career to developing a navigation system for investors with and without experience. He created a constant expanding team of co-thinkers who believed in supporting relations between them. Bogle and his followers insist that investing shouldn't be complicated. Keep in mind that if you picture yourself retired with a cold martini with an olive, free of fear about your tomorrow, follow the Boglehead's Guide to ensure that future. So this summary presents a detailed manual about investments, their types, and steps to minimize risks. After navigating this tidbit, you'll know how to have both feet on the floor before you start investing and how to secure your wealth from inflation and other hazards. And even if you don't know anything about finances, this summary is a perfect choice to learn the ropes. Like a heartwarming conversation with an old friend who's always there to support you, it'll bring you true joy and the intention to start changing your life for the best. Chapter 2. Financial Behavior Matters It's a sad statistic, but most people will live from hand to mouth by age 65. Yes, people live longer, but no, they don't make more money. More precisely, they lack the knowledge and tools to do it. Investments can not only save the day, but become your future bread and butter. However, it is crucial to know all the subtleties of sound investment. When you invest money, you expect a return on a larger scale. Thus, to achieve long-term financial stability, you should do a little research about your financial self. Let's take a look at the three most typical types of financial behavior. Borrowing. People who survive mainly on borrowing often live like there's no tomorrow. They purchase anything they want and pay some percentage of their credit cards but don't own any wealth. It's like a financial freefall accompanied by an illusion of control. Consuming. These individuals spend everything they earn, whether they need something or not. Although it's better than borrowing, it's a lifestyle that doesn't get you anywhere close to wealth. Keeping. Keepers do not necessarily earn more than the previous groups. However, they know the importance of net worth, the value of resources, tangible and others they own. They don't run like hell to spend every last penny on the same day they receive their paychecks. On the contrary, they are geniuses of smart spending habits and savings. Remember, don't be too obsessed with how much money you make. Instead, explore the ways to sustain what you've earned in the long-term perspective. Remember the promise about preparing a solid ground for your active investment life? The essential steps you need to take are 1. Upgrade your financial mentality. Move from paycheck to net worth. 2. Deal with credit and debt. Pay them all off. 3. Start mining your gold. Create an emergency fund. The earlier you start saving money, the more wealth you can gain. Meet the rule of 72. It suggests that even a tiny investment gradually enriches your capital. To determine how many years it will take an investment to double in value, simply divide 72 by the annual rate of return. For example, an investment that returns 8% doubles every 9 years. 72 divided by 8 equals 9. Mel Lindauer, Taylor Larimore, and Michael LaBeouf. Chapter 3. You need money to make more money. The recipe for comfort living, happy-go-lucky retirement, and something close to billionaire fortune states, the earlier you start saving, the brighter your future will be. To save effectively, you should maintain endurance, plan properly, and be a responsible and visionary investor. Naturally, you won't become Gatsby in one day. No one can do that. But if you save a few dozen cents from every earned dollar, you have fantastic chances to live the life you want for several years. But before buying your first Cadillac, you should decide where to find money to invest. There are two options, earning and decreasing expenses. Bogleheads advise you to do all. Start with saving something near 10% of your income. Or if you spend all your revenue and cannot currently afford to save much, save even just 1% today and increase savings every few weeks. You'll still see the difference. Imagine that your paycheck is an ice cream cone. Its top is what you have to save. Otherwise, it'll melt in the sun. Likewise, you'll spend your money on something unnecessary. 
Also, learn to spend less. Make notes on your smartphone or a list in your organizer. Write down how much you spend every day on simple pleasure like riding in a cab, coffee to go, or a trinket bought on sale. In actuality, such innocent expenses slowly strain the fat from your budget, and you come up with nothing to invest. Thus, think of alternatives. For example, take a walk instead of taking a cab. It sounds simple, but that's the foundation for investing. Let's see where you can get money to invest. Salary increase. You can stick to your usual lifestyle, but invest the new part of your income. Become a conscious customer. Buy secondhand goods. Analyze the cost of your dwelling. Quite possibly, you'll save money if you move to a less expensive neighborhood. Allocate another source of income. If you've ever dreamed of owning a business, it's a great time to launch it. Make friends with your debt. You'll be in the pocket if you manage to keep low interest rates. Good debt, such as a loan for education, is an investment in your future enrichment. As you can see, you already possess the money to invest. The only thing you have to do is revise your financial attitude. Chapter 4. What to Buy? Stocks, bonds, and other securities. Before you start investing, let's explore the most common investment opportunities. Stocks. If you invest in this asset, you'll own a share of some enterprise. Possessing stocks allows you to multiply your financial resources. Bonds. Buying bonds is one of the most secure options. You lend your money to an organization, private or government, with the guarantee you'll get a return. T-bills, aka treasury issues, are a slam way to strike it rich among all variants of bonds. By choosing this option, you can sleep peacefully. The U.S. government guarantees the return of such investment to these investors. You can ask your bank manager to help you purchase a T-bill, contact the Federal Reserve, or request that your broker buy it. You can also invest in mutual funds. It's an incredibly popular investment option that suggests that you invest money in a particular company. Further, that organization buys securities. That's your investment. Their significant advantages are low minimum. You don't have to invest substantial sums from starters. An ease of process. You can buy mutual funds while lying in bed drinking your morning coffee. Annuities. An easy investment choice. For instance, you invest the sum in a fixed annuity, and after a while, you get a rate of return. Usually, investors gain a return in the period of up to five years. Insurance companies guarantee the return. A pretty comforting thought. ETFs, aka exchange trade funds. As you've already guessed from its name, this investment option suggests that you buy a package of activities and then can trade it on the stock exchange. Note, the time when you can hold assets is very short, one day usually, and you'll have to use the help of your broker constantly. Beware of inflation. It decreases the buying power of your current possessions on the sly. That's why you need help with inflation-protected bonds. The U.S. Treasury has your back. You can preserve buying power by investing in inflation bonds or TIPS. Don't expect significant return, low fixed rates and everything, but be sure it'll be riskless. Did you know, more than half of the American adult population invests in stocks. Chapter 5. Slow and Steady Wins the Race One of the problems that could compete in the popularity with the eternal to be or not to be is how much I have to save for relishing a cloudless retirement. To understand how much money you'll need to save, you should consider various factors. From your current age and time when you plan to retire to the inflation rate and life expectancy. To calculate the approximate duration you'll need to save. Later, when you have determined your numbers, you can use an online financial calculator, but know your portfolio of returns value first. And don't forget the significance of investment autonomy. Believe it or not, you don't need to spend lots of money on brokers. Even if you invest passively, eventually you'll have a solid and diversified financial portfolio. And even when you save a small sum, you're batting a thousand. Keep in mind, successful investors don't fall for cliched pseudo values such as don't be satisfied with mediocre. Instead, these recommendations are the roads that lead you nowhere and leave you poorer. Yet, the pillar of effective investing is asset allocation. You'll need to create a working portfolio to decide the amount of money you should have in stocks. So, determine what you need money for, your investment time frame, what risk is acceptable, and where you are financially standing. For example, Imagine you plan to save money for your children's college education and will need the return in two years. In this case, you'd avoid up and down options as stocks. They are very unpredictable. And choose alternative investments. Indeed, stocks can bring you great returns, but you never know when the timing will be correct. Risks are almost inevitable in investing, but the silver lining is that you can define the level of risk you're comfortable with. Simplicity and low cost are the main components of a successful investment formula.
So if you make your first steps in the investing journey, pay attention to low-cost options such as index funds. Although mutual funds are increasingly tempting for a return, you don't want to cough up your wealth on brokers and managers' services. Chapter 6. Don't underestimate the tax's impact on investing. As you can see, assets and costs are investing essentials. They are things you can control. However, other critical costs often do not receive proper attention. Taxes. Although taxes are inseparable elements of the financial universe, they tangibly weaken your return. Let's have a look at mutual funds taxation. Capital gains in stocks and bonds, dividends are the primary driving forces of return. As a capital gain receiver, you get money for assets a company has sold for a higher price. If you get dividends, you gain money from a company's profits as its shareholder. And what about taxes? You have to pay from 15% to 35% in taxes for stocks and bonds when you receive dividends. You'll be taxed differently depending on whether your capital gain is short-term or long-term. So it's hardly surprising that a fastly gained return, aka short-term capital gain, is taxed at an investor's highest marginal income tax rate. It may seem that your return flows like water down a drain because of taxes. To reduce taxes' impact, you can focus on long-term gains or purchase the funds you won't have to sell shortly, causing increased turnover and taxation. Finally, you'll select a tax-decreasing retirement plan and be ready to invest smartly. Indeed, sound investment requires something more than low-cost philosophy and tax knowledge. It would help if you also tossed around ways to diversify your investment. When choosing one investment option, you play with fire. No one knows what will happen to them in the next minute, so you probably shouldn't trust your money to a single corporation. A small tip. If you intend to make your portfolio more diversified, invest in mutual funds. They are a multiverse of individual stocks. Therefore, you don't have to spend a great deal of money. Bogleheads teach us to avoid common mistakes investors make. First, many investors rely on financial media fairy tales about permanently flourishing funds whose managers hacked the holy grail of investment success. No one can guarantee that yesterday's successful fund will bring that same return the following year. Second, some of them believe in market timing, a fleeting idea that it is possible to predict which fund will hit the jackpot based on its past performance. Reading tea leaves may be fun, but you don't want to entrust your future financial freedom to media who don't have a clue how investments work. Chapter 7. Everything you need to know about rebalancing. To become an investment guru, you should realize there's no permanent and universal approach to managing your assets. Once the call motion gives way to gigantic waves, you'll need to feel the flaw for surfing it with minimum loss. In investing, we call it rebalancing. Rebalancing means that you set up your assets at square one after their percentage experiences shifts caused by market impact or other events. As a result, some of your investments can bring a much higher return percentage than others. The trouble is that A, your portfolio will become messy, and B, the market and not you will control the content of your portfolio. Ideally, your portfolio should include more or less equal amounts of cash, bonds, stocks, and their intended percentage. Keep in mind that rebalancing is your risk regulation instrument. It's the way to return your portfolio to the level of risk you can afford. Tip, don't check your portfolio too often if you're a beginner investor. Sometimes swings in assets and percentage can be pretty uncomfortable. Instead, you can review it half yearly or for more extended periods. We've reached the point when we need to decide how to rebalance. For example, you can sell assets surpassing others and purchase those lagging. Alternatively, you can invest more funds in assets that don't reach the desired allocation of assets. Finally, let's see how market dynamics can affect your portfolio and why it is crucial to diversify investments. For example, you plan to invest $50,000 and get a return in a year. To achieve the goal, you'll invest your money in stocks, $30,000, bonds, $15,000, and cash, $5,000. Now let's assume that the market returns for stocks will comprise 10%. For bonds, 5%, and 2% for cash at the end of the year. After easy calculations, we receive $31,500, $15,750, and $5,100 with a total of $52,350. It is the scenario where you can chill out because your plan works perfectly well. However, rebalancing is crucial when some of your assets showcase extreme decreases in market return. Rebalance is like rearranging your beloved apartment. Often, such refreshment lets more sunlight into space. Likewise, smart juggling of your portfolio assets can significantly boost your return. Chapter 8. Diversify Essentials. Eliminate the Rest. 
Knowing your options and the hazards of the investment wonderland is essential for hammering out your financial freedom. Like Cinderella getting ready for the ball, you'll need one more thing, and that's not the glass slippers. You'll need to explore the list of do's that will change your financial habits to the best and pave the road to your financial freedom. Ensure your portfolio is multi-component. As you saw in the example of rebalancing, a diverse portfolio always has your back if something goes off track. Disregard media outcries. Almost every financial media considers themselves fortune tellers, so you can't afford to rely on them in any investment phase. Remember, they don't care about the security of your investments. Audience extension remains their priority. Having a fiery heart will be your indisputable advantage in investing. Our emotions are like mental navigators that encourage us to make financial decisions. It is almost impossible to become a successful investor following cold logic only. Get insurance. Make a deal with the best firms. Be proactive. Take care of such essentials as your will and living trust. Don't forget about saving for education. Every penny you keep for yourself or your children will be an invaluable input in their amazing future. Remember, buy insurance against challenges of great likelihood. Otherwise, you steal money from yourself. As you can see, investing isn't limited to numbers and market activity. Applying some simple tips helps you become a true master of your life. We'd all like to think that we're special, that perhaps we're somehow even immortal. While we may indeed be special, we are all mortals and thus have to deal with the reality of our eventual demise. Therefore, there are two certainties in our lives, death and taxes. Mel Lindauer, Taylor Larimore, and Michael LaBeouf. Conclusion. Having investments is a surefire way to maximize your wealth. It doesn't only allow you to accumulate wealth, but also teaches you to be responsible, forward-thinking, and appreciate the value of the current moment. Needless to say, investing teaches you not to postpone. Even if you plan to save for your child's study at Yale, you can still have a comfortable life for yourself. So whether you're an experienced investor or a newbie, the recommendations in this summary provide you with a fresh start. Ogleheads promote one essential sentiment between the lines. You are a smith of your happiness. Ask yourself what you want money for. The fact that most people invest money to save for retirement shouldn't lead you astray if, deep down, you dream of moving to Corsica right now. Therefore, you should explore how to manage your investments as soon as possible. A diverse portfolio and rebalancing skills already comprise a gigantic step towards investing in your future and enjoying your tomorrow. Finally, the guide highlights that you already possess most of the components of financial freedom. Even if you have several debts, nothing prevents you from paying them off and opening a new page of your exciting investment life. Try this. Conduct a thorough revision of your physical assets. You may own many items you can sell without regret and get money to invest. Give yourself a year to invest some money in a low-risk index fund, and then analyze how such financial practice influences your life and wealth.